Hi, my name is Luke Clossy. Um, I'd like to talk to you about History 130, which is Fundamentals of World History. Uh, this is really my baby. This is a course that uh, I always wanted to teach, and I'm very happy to be able to teach it here. I think it was actually the first course in Canada that does all of world history from the beginning to the end. Um, at least it was, to the best of my knowledge, when I started teaching it. Uh, it's a very big course. We literally start with the Big Bang or with some other, I think sometimes we do a Mayan creation myth of the world. And then we go as far as we can in 13 weeks. Usually that keep, catches us maybe the 23rd century, the 24th century, uh, through the magic of mathematics and statistical models and prophecy, we can look a little bit into the future to see what we think is going to happen. And we're about as confident of that as we are as uh, some of the things we think happened in the distant past. Um, this course was designed for, I think officially, for everyone. This is sort of what I think everyone should know to be a productive, happy, um, useful member of society, and maybe especially for teachers. About a third of our students go on to become teachers of some sort or another. Um, but really, unofficially, this was the course that I designed for myself. This was the stuff that all the things I wish I had learned as an undergraduate that would have served me well in all my other courses and then even beyond university life. Um, it's hard to cover everything in 13 weeks. My first plan was to talk very, very fast in lecture, but it turns out that doesn't work very well. Um, so I found out that I had to make decisions and choose things to emphasize and things to leave off. Uh, so I want to share two emphases with you. Um, the first is the non-Western world. Uh, today in Canada, one out of every six historians study the world beyond Europe and beyond North America, even though five out of every six people on the planet today live in those non-Western places. Um, SFU is actually twice as good as the national average. We have a large number of historians uh, looking at different places all around the world. So in this course, we try to uh, purposely skew things a little bit beyond the West as much as possible. Um, if you don't do this, I think so your historical education or your education in general is geographically biased in a way that you might not be aware of. And then the second emphasis is connections. A lot of times if you're taking a history course or any kind of course, the geography is very strict where you can't follow leads that go beyond the course, the region that the course is set in. Um, we don't have any regional boundaries, so we follow things around the world. My favorite is um, my favorite sort of idea to track around the world is the idea of nonviolence, because that's a strange enough idea that you can see it pretty distinctly as it moves. So we can trace it from ancient India into the Roman Empire, and then it goes on and we see it in 15th century Central Europe. Uh, there's one fellow who was a proponent of it whose name I really like, so I'm going to try to say that, Khalshitsky, right now. Um, and then it makes its way into Russia, another connection made Tolstoy, who did other things besides getting involved in uh, nonviolence. And then it comes to British Columbia, um, where a border guard working uh, at the border down here with Washington State got involved, and then it goes to South Asia in time to destroy the British Empire, and then through modern media expand around the world. Um, that's not something I think you would see in a traditional history course, where an idea stops at the border and you don't get any further. Um, there's a variety of readings in the class. We choose different time periods, different regions. The lectures are pretty good, but the heart of it is tutorials, where you get to really dig in with these different readings from around the world. Um, quizzes, which aren't nearly as difficult as everyone says they are. Um, an independent research project where you can choose your own area to follow, and then a final exam where you are invited to design your own History 130 and make decisions about it which are uh, probably very different from the ones I've made. Um, I hope this course serves its students in their future studies. People go on to other disciplines, and I think uh, this course benefits them because they know the historical and geographical context of the other things they're studying. People go on into other history courses. Um, we also have a stream of global and comparative history courses where you can do more of this looking at different connections and comparisons across regions. Um, and if any of this appeals to you, I hope to see you soon in a world history course at SFU.